And I think we expect something next year in the year 2023. It could be early next year uh, if we're fortunate. But uh, a lot of CFOs and a lot of CEOs are, are watching that. Welcome to Dream Richer. The price of Bitcoin got a small relief bounce this week as investors hoped that the worst of the crypto liquidity crisis is over. By Friday, Bitcoin had risen 13.63% for the seven-day trading week beginning Sunday and was on pace for its best week since October. The price rose as high as $22,478 at one point, climbing back from a low of about $17,000 in June. According to experts, $22,500 to $23,000 is the resistance level to watch for Bitcoin. If it breaks above that threshold, it should rise pretty quickly to its next stop of $28,000. However, Bitcoin is still about 70% below its November all-time high of $68,982 and has quite a ride to reach new time highs. By the end of this video, Michael Saylor explains what it would take for Bitcoin to reach new time highs. As he argues, more institutional adoption is needed, and there's only one practical way to achieve it. If you find the video helpful, then don't forget to subscribe. Let's get right into it. You know, I think the catalysts for institutional adoptions are, um, uh, there's a short list of them. One of them is um, FASB Accounting. There's this project to review accounting for digital assets on a balance sheet, and that's been formalized. And I think we expect something next year, in the year 2023. It could be early next year, uh, if we're fortunate. But uh, a lot of CFOs and a lot of CEOs are, are watching that. That has an impact on, uh, on the way you report your P&L and your balance sheet. I think another interesting milestone is um, is the availability of a spot ETF. And a big milestone that we should keep our eyes on is what happens with regard to the Grayscale, the GBTC application to become a spot ETF. Because uh, there's a, a deadline coming up in July, in uh, early July. I don't have the exact date, July 10th, July something. Mm -hmm. And um, right now there's a process going on and the SEC has allowed individual investors to weigh in on this, and something like 11,500 letters have been submitted to the SEC, 99% positive, maybe 99 more than 99% positive, uh, overwhelmingly positive in favor of a spot ETF. I think that if, uh, if the SEC grants that, that will be the first spot ETF uh, in the history of the industry. So a company that wanted to own a billion dollars of Bitcoin in market to market in fair value, they could do it through a spot ETP, but, they, but right now there is no spot ETP. So I, I think that um, that will help with institutional adoption. I think that the third thing is we're waiting on some joint guidance from CFTC and uh, SEC regarding digital assets. I think uh, institutions are very sensitive to that. I think the fourth thing is, is we're starting to see more banks get involved in custody. I think by the end of the year, we'll see some large banks that allow you to custody your digital assets like Bitcoin uh, with them. As Michael Saylor argues, a Bitcoin spot ETF will help shoot Bitcoin up to new time highs. Because as soon the SEC accepts Bitcoin ETF, large institutes will feel more safe to invest in Bitcoin. Nonetheless, Grayscale Investments' proposal to convert its Bitcoin ETF into a spot ETF was rejected by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission on Wednesday. This sparked market panic and resulted in a 5% drop in Bitcoin price, because investors were hoping for a positive response from the SEC during an interview, Jim Cramer argued that Bitcoin is the only digital asset he classified as a commodity. This leads to the understanding that he expects the Commodities and Futures Trading Commission to regulate Bitcoin and implement proper Bitcoin structures before he can push once again for regulating a spot Bitcoin ETF. I think that we, we are seeing more adoption. It will continue. All of these processes, they're rolling forward, but you, you just want to keep a checklist of them. And every time you see one more regulatory milestone or one more milestone where a big bulge bracket bank adopts Bitcoin and, and uh, adopts stable coins, that's a real positive bullish thing for the industry. With regard to the rest of the crypto ecosystem, 
The world wants digital property and digital property needs to be a commodity without an issuer. And the great shining example of, of creating a digital commodity is what Satoshi did. No ICO, no pre-mine, disappeared, never monetized it, not influencing it. Uh, if there's no issuer, then it starts to look similar to, to gold or, or wood or lumber or wheat or land. It's a commodity. That's very important. The world, it needs a regulatory clarity with regard to what all the other tokens are. So if I want to create another digital commodity, I need a way to get it endorsed as a digital commodity. The other day, Gary Gensler went on CNBC and he said, the only token I'm going to speak to is Bitcoin. And I'm going to say Bitcoin is a commodity. I don't want to give an opinion on the other tokens. So uh, we're early on in the industry. There's a massive demand for uh, currency, but it's hard to figure out how I create one. How do I create $100 billion of digital currency that will be universally accepted. And so there's a little bit of, um, there's uncertainty there. And that, I mean, there's massive demand for Tether because people need it. And if you live in uh, Turkey or if you live in Afghanistan, you'd, you'd rather take your risk with Tether, uh, a private company, than uh, what is the alternative? Trust the local currency. So then you've got, you know, digital tokens, NFTs or tokens, what are they? How do I define one? What am I allowed to do? Uh, there's a bunch of different rules and there's a lot of murkiness and people aren't sure. But we know there's excitement, but there's a lot of uncertainty. And then you've got digital securities. There's a tension between the 20th century and the 21st century. It's clear from Michael Saylor's explanation that crypto adoption is inevitable. However, more structures must first be implemented that allow investors to feel safe entering the crypto market. Experts are already predicting that 1 billion people around the world will use cryptocurrency technology in one way or another by the end of this decade. Institutional investors are increasingly embracing digital currencies in their portfolios, and some retirement savers may soon see Bitcoin as an option in their 4.0.1k plans. As of yet, the rate of crypto adoption in the US is too slow because of regulatory uncertainty. President Joe Biden's stance on crypto, however, makes us bullish on more adoption. Last month, the White House outlined a national policy to address the risks and benefits of digital assets and their underlying technology. Do you agree with Michael Saylor? To watch the latest crypto news, watch these videos here.